The day was July 8th, 2011. The mission was STS-135, the final launch of Space Shuttle Atlantis and the last mission of the shuttle program. I remember walking down to the river in my hometown to catch a glimpse of this historic and bittersweet moment. The shuttle's program had already been in full swing for nine years before I was born. It had already suffered the tragic loss of a shuttle Challenger and a crew, but it had come back, safer and stronger than before. Now, I don't remember my first shuttle launch. It was just a common part of my life growing up. In my family, we'd turn on the TV to watch the last minutes of the countdown before dashing out the front door and looking east to catch a glimpse of Columbia, Discovery, Atlantis, or Endeavor as they popped down from behind the trees and rocketed into space. Then we'd always wait to hear the familiar sonic booms as the shuttle broke the sound barrier on its way into outer space. One thing I was never able to see in person was the shuttle on its gliding flight to land at the Kennedy Space Center but I heard it many a time. Following Columbia's loss during re-entry, it was reassuring to hear the boom, boom that was capable of rattling you from sleep because you knew the shuttle had safely transported her crew and cargo beyond our Earth's atmosphere and brought them home to Earth again. It was sad to see the shuttle program come to an end. Some people had a favorite sports figure or musician growing up, but for me, I had a favorite shuttle. It was hard to imagine those majestic machines being relegated to museum pieces across the country. Never to see them strapped to an external tank and boosters. Never again to see the fire that would burst from the engines as they roared to life, pushing them off the launch pad as they moved higher and higher, leaving the gravity of Earth for the weightlessness of space. Little did I realize on that July afternoon in 2011 that not only was the shuttle program coming to an end, but it would be nine years before astronauts would lift off again from the space coast. Fast forward to today, and the landscape of space exploration looks quite different. In fact, it feels a bit like we have stepped back in time to the early days, when Alan Shepard aboard the Mercury Redstone rocket in a spacecraft called Freedom 7 became the first American to travel into space, and the first man to manually control his ship in outer space. But while the new machine that will take them into space is not as exciting to me as the shuttles, I am thrilled that astronauts will once again be lifting off from the space coast. The crew for the Demo-2 mission has been with NASA since 2000 and are both veterans of the shuttle program. In fact, the spacecraft commander, Douglas Hurley, was the pilot of Shuttle Atlantis on the final mission, STS-135, in 2011. It seems only fitting that one of the crew from that final flight should hold the distinction of being among the first to return to space. Alongside Hurley is Robert Benkin, the Joint Operations Commander of the flight. This will be the third flight into space for both men. The crew is expected to dock with the ISS, and while there is not a specific date for their splashdown in the Atlantic, they are expected to remain in space for between one to four months. The Falcon 9 rocket that will carry Hurley and Binken into space will lift off from Launch Complex 39A. This launch pad has been in service with modifications, of course, since the first Saturn V launch carried the unmanned Apollo 4 spacecraft into space in 1967. All of the crewed Apollo missions beginning with Apollo 8 used pad 39A. The pad was reconfigured for the shuttle program, and STS-1, the first flight of the shuttle program, christened the pad in 1981. It was the site of the first 24 launches of the shuttle program. 39A would also be the location of the final shuttle launches, culminating in the launch of Atlantis in 2011. But the history of 39A lives on, as it is from here that SpaceX has launched several historic flights, and it is from here that Demo-2 will blast off carrying Americans into space from American soil once again. Let's watch the launch together. Stage one tanks pressing for flight. T minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. Lift off of the Falcon 9 and Crew Dragon. Go NASA. Go SpaceX. Godspeed. Bottom dog. America has launched. 
so rises a new era of American space flight, and with it the ambitions of a new generation continuing the dream. 20 seconds into flight, stage one propulsion is nominal. T plus 30 seconds into this historic mission. Flying crew on board Dragon and Falcon 9, and look at them go. Falcon power telemetry nominal. M1D throttle down. We're throttling down to get ready for the period of maximum dynamic pressure. We're in the throttle bucket. Reports say all systems are go. Vehicle is supersonic. We've exceeded Mach 1 on the Falcon 9. M1D throttle up. Here for the final shuttle launch in 2011, and here for the first SpaceX Demo 2 commercial flight in 2020.